Hi folks, this is Rich with Advantage Applications, and today we're going to be looking at how to work with record sets in an access database using VBA. This is an advanced topic and familiarity with VBA is assumed. And also don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. The scenario for this exercise is going to be uh, we're going to want to email a thank you to our customers who have made an order within the last month. And we're also going to send a special thank you to customers whose order was $100 or greater. So to do that, I've created a couple tables here. I have a customer table with 500 records in it. This is just sample data that I downloaded online for free. Uh, it has pretty standard information, first name, last name, company, address, uh, phone number, uh, email address, and website. And then I use that data to create and populate an order table. I just use some random generators here to populate uh, order dates and order amounts, and I, I just kept cycling through the customers to do this. I did that three times, so I have 1,500 records here. So this is the record, this is the data, rather, that we're going to be filtering, but we are going to create a join query so that our customer data is included, specifically the uh, email address and the customer name. So the first thing I did was to set up a relationship between customer and order. So customer ID is our primary key in the customer table, and it is a foreign key in the order table. Okay, I have a module here that has a little bit of code in it that I use to populate that order table, but module one is where we're going to be writing our code for this exercise. Now, before we get started, we're gonna to need to make sure that we have the proper reference to the data access objects that are going to let us work with these record sets in code. If you're using Access 2016, and I also believe 2013, you don't have to set this because it's already included in the, uh, in the references. I think it's all rolled up under Microsoft, Microsoft uh, Access Object Library. But if you're working with an older version of Access, you'll want to come into this reference uh, panel and do this manually. And the way that you do that, again, is you come to the Tools menu and you click References. You want to scroll down to Microsoft DAO, and in this case it's 3.6. You'll want to choose whatever the, the most recent library is in, on your machine, and it ought to be 3.6 also. And you just click to select and then click OK. Now, I'm not going to do this because, like I said, DAO is already included in Access 2016, and I can already work with it natively in the code. Let's click Cancel. And uh, so DAO, again, stands for Data Access Objects, and it's kind of the native tongue for VBA to use record set objects in native access tables. It even works fine if you're linked up to SharePoint as a back end. Uh, some folks use ADO, which is ActiveX Data Objects, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. I personally find DAO to be a little bit more uh, user-friendly and a little less complex. All right, I created a subroutine here that's public so that I can call it straight from the immediate window and we don't even have to use a form to test this code. And I just named it thanks, uh, thank customers. All right, so we want to create a variable, a string variable, to hold our SQL statements that we're going to use. This so string SQL is going to equal, and we're going to put our SQL statement in there. Now, I could type all this out and I could list the fields manually and I could create the inner join. But it's a lot easier just to come over to your query designer and kind of cheat and create it here. So I'm going to add both of these tables. It already is aware of the relationship, of course. And what we want from the customer table is going to be the customer's name. And we want their email address. And from the orders table, what we want is order date and what the total order amount was. I didn't, I didn't bother with products in, in this scenario because we, it's not really necessary for what we're, what we're going over working in uh, code, with, working with record sets in code. Okay, and I do wanna put one criteria in here. We want to work with order, order dates that have happened within the last, we'll say month. So we want um, everything that's gonna be greater than or equal to date minus, we'll say, 30. So whatever the current date is minus 30 days, as long as this value is greater than or equal to that, we should have it returned in our record set. And we can even test it here just to see that we are getting some data back. And we are out of 1500 recs, we are getting 130. Okay. 
So we can come up here to our view selector, choose SQL view, and we can just copy that right out of the query editor. We don't need to save that query. And we can come here and paste that right into our string variable. Of course, we'll have to clean it up a little bit, so we'll do that now. We'll put a space there. And we'll just use string concatenation to keep building this out. So string SQL equals string SQL and there's our inner join information. And then one more string SQL equals string SQL. And then our where clause. Okay. So now our string variable will hold, variable will hold that uh, SQL statement that we just created. So the next thing we need now is a record set variable. I'll call mine RST. So we're going to say dim RST as DAO dot record set. And now to create that, to actually instantiate it, we want to say set RST equals current DB dot open record set and then we pass in the SQL string as a parameter and that's going to create our record set record set object so after you create a record set object the first thing that I'd like to do is to make sure that I actually have records returned so a conditional statement will let us know if rst.record count is greater than zero then and I'm just going to bookmark that for right now so then if you have records, you can iterate through those records and do whatever you need to do. But I like to bookmark that and come down and go ahead and write my cleanup code that's going to close the record set, rst.close, and set that record set object to nothing to free up the memory. All right, now we can come back up here, remove our bookmark, and we can start actually working with our records. Now, there are different ways you can iterate through a, uh, a record set, but uh, this is one of my favorites, um, but now that we know we have records, we'll go ahead and explicitly tell it to move to the first record by saying rst.move first. And it should already be at the first record by default, but I do like to explicitly tell it to move to the first just in case I, I don't like surprises. Okay, so now that it, we're at the first record, we want to say do while rst.eof equals false. And eof stands for end of file. So we're basically saying that we're going to move through this record set until we're at the end of the file. So while rst equals dot, sorry, while rst dot eof equals false, we'll continue. Okay, and to make sure again that we don't have an infinite loop here, I go ahead and write that part uh, that keeps it moving. So rst dot move next. So at the end of whatever we're doing, it's going to move to the next record, and it'll continue to loop then until we reach the end of file. So now that we're actually iterating through our records, we can start doing whatever conditional operations that we want to do on them. And in this case, we're going to say if RST. And the way that you access uh, a record sets fields is that you use this uh, exclamation point operator. And I think it's called a POW. I think they refer to it as a POW. It's either POW or BANG, but you'll recognize it by the exclamation point. That's what you use. You use a square bracket and then whatever the field name is. So in this case, uh, RST's order amount field is what we're looking for. Uh, no, sorry, it's total order amount. So let me just copy that so I don't make any typos and paste it right there. So if RST total order amount is greater than or equal to 100, then we want to send our customers a special thank you or, or make them some sort of offer maybe but uh, in this case we'll just call it call send special thanks and that is the name of a subroutine that we're going to write in a minute and this subroutine would actually handle all of the uh, details of generating an email sending it out but we're not going to do that uh, we're just we're just going to make a placeholder right now because that that is all we need to do for this uh, simulation here so call send special thanks and we're going to send it a parameter and that will be the customer name and also the email address. So we will say RST first name. Actually, it's like this. First name, RST last name, and RST email. Okay, 
So we're calling this subroutine. We haven't written it yet, but we're calling that, that subroutine or function, and we're sending it three parameters based on our record set. And so the first that we're sending is the record set's first name field, the record set's last name field, and the record set's email field. So whatever the values are in those fields is what's going to get sent to that subroutine. And then it's going to go to the next record and send those values for the next rec and on and on and on until we move through the entire record set. Now, I also want to add a, a second part to this. So this is for the special thanks, but if they didn't spend $100 or more, we still want to send a thank you to our customers. So this will just be call send thanks. But we'll also we'll send the same uh, parameters. Copy those. Okay. Now we're going to write these uh, subroutines. So we're going to say private sub send special thanks, and it's going to take three parameters. The first is going to be first name. And that's a string. Last name. And that's also a string. And email, which also is a string. Okay. So I'm not actually going to write a, a routine here that literally will send this email. Instead, what I'm going to do, just to prove that it gets called and that it gets called and does the right thing, we're just going to write a debug uh, print statement here. We'll just say debug print. Thank you. And first name and last name for your patronage. Patronage. We would. We would like to offer you a. Let's say special gift. Gift. Okay. And we really aren't even going to do anything with the uh, with the email address in this case. This is something you obviously would send into a subroutine that you're really going to send an email from. But for our test purposes here and our demo purposes, we don't really need to do anything with that. Okay. And so our next subroutine would be very very similar to this one. And although in real object oriented programming, you don't want to be copying and pasting a lot, we would just modify this routine to either send the special thanks or the standard thanks. But in this case, for demo purposes, we're just going to make it be its own routine. Send thanks. And we would just say thank you, first name, last name, for your patronage. And we would just leave it at that. Okay, a quick recap of what we have done. So we set our references so that we can create a DAO record set object. We created variables to hold our SQL string and our record set object. We created a SQL string to join two tables together and to pull in order data that has uh, taken place within the last uh, 30 days. Then we set a record set object to, or we rather we created one based on that SQL string. Um, we get our record set back. We test it to make sure that it has records in there. And if so, we move to the first record. And then we move through each record, testing what the order amount was. And based on what the or order amount was, we send it to one of these routines to uh, conduct some other behavior. In this case, it's just going to print to our immediate window here. So, uh, you know what, another thing that's nice to do when you go through a record set like this is the user tends to be sitting there kind of looking at their screen waiting. So we could turn on the, the wait cursor. I won't do that, but I will send them a message, a little pop-up message once everything would be finished. So we would just say message box, all done. Now we're going to run that and see how it behaves. I'm just going to call it from the immediate window. Sub function not defined. Okay, send thanks. Sends thanks. All right, so slight typo there. Correct that. And now play it through. Action will reset my project. That's right, because I renamed that subroutine, so it has to reset the project. So I say OK. And now I call it from the, uh, the immediate window. It runs through and says all done. Now if we look back here at our immediate window, output, we can see that the names definitely uh, changed up as it went through those those folks. So Art Paneer, Lena Paprocki, Paprocki, and so on.
and some of those folks did get a uh, standard message and some got the special gift offer. And in a nutshell, that is it, folks. It's not very uh, difficult. And um, I really appreciate you watching the video. If uh, I intend to make many, many more of these. Uh, I, I've been doing this for quite a while, and I encounter some scenarios at work on the daily uh, that I think might be valuable to make uh, videos of. So if you like these, please uh, hit the like button, subscribe. And uh, if there's anything in particular you would like to see a video covering, let me know. I'd be happy to give it a try. Um, also, if you would uh, like to consult with me or, or, or have me come in on a project or something, I'd be open to, uh, to hearing about that as well. I'll put a link in the description to my website. Thanks.